Take a seat. According to a recent World Bank calculation, 70% of world growth is coming from Asia. Would you say that in the current financial crisis, Asia in general and China in particular is playing a positive role because of China's very major domestic stimulus program, because of the high growth that China continues to experience, and because by keeping the Chinese economy open to imports, China is helping the global system. Yes, but you must remember the the volumes. China's GDP is 3.3 trillion. America's GDP is 15 trillion. So it's uh, five to one, you know. So uh, China hasn't got the same reach throughout the whole world. Her banks, her, her multinationals are not throughout the whole world. What China can do by keeping her economy going is not to be a drag on the world and perhaps to help the countries around her who are, where the inter-regional links have improved over the last 10, 20 years. So Korea, Japan, Taiwan, ASEAN, maybe even India. Uh, they are countries that will benefit from China's recovery program, right? then imports, exports, and uh, investments will flow between us. But for China to rescue America and Europe is just beyond her capacity. I mean, it's maybe in 50 years, or 30 years maybe, but not now. But there's a difference in the, in the size of the economy. Mr. Mentor, I'm uh, Steve Oaken, Chairman of the American Chamber of Commerce in Singapore. And, and my question is, um, from an ASEAN perspective, how do you see U.S.-ASEAN relations impacting China-ASEAN relations, and what is the proper balance for ASEAN in dealing with the U.S. and dealing with China? Good question. I told Charlene Bashevsky uh, when she was President Clinton's U.S. trade Representative. Representative. That if there's no U.S. ASEAN FTA, in 10, 20 years, ASEAN's economy will increasingly be sucked into the China market. And the U.S. market will be a secondary market. In the end, she moved and she persuaded Clinton to have a Singapore U.S. FTA as the benchmark for other ASEAN countries to join in the FTA. So Malaysia started, Thailand started, but never completed. Mm -hmm. Chu Chi came, I think, 1999 to Brunei and said, <coughs> we have an ASEAN-China FTA. And we were astounded. He says, don't worry. You take early harvesting. That was a strategic move made to incorporate ASEAN so that ASEAN will see China's growth as an opportunity and not as a threat. And, you know, you can sell her, you can sell them whatever you like, fruits, vegetables, teak, whatever, and they just absorb it. <laughs> there are 1,300 1, billion people, uh, highly productive, can just absorb it. So now, uh, I would say, if you look at Japan, China-Japan trade now is bigger than a China-Japan-US trade. Proximity and complementarity. So, I believe the US have a lot of ground to catch up. And uh, it, probably they did not believe this would happen so fast, but it has. But we've got an FTA with the U.S., and we are very 
we are extremely satisfied with that and we are keeping up our trade relations and investment relations and we can go to the US visa free but it should have been done for the whole of ASEAN in, in your memoirs you wrote that you hope the China of the future will be a China that is modern self-confident and responsible if, if we use those three criteria of modernity, self-confidence, and responsibility, how would you assess China's current role in the world? Well, she is not yet modern. I mean, the few cities are. <coughs> Beijing, Shanghai, uh, Dalian. Coastal cities are more modern. <clears throat> but it's not a modern country. I mean, uh, it will take another 20, 30 years to bring the other cities up to a similar standard. Uh, self-confidence? Yes, I think they are increasingly self-confident. I mean, they know the barring accidents, they will make it, and they can make it. Uh, in fact, Sometimes I think there's a little overconfidence. Uh, I, I think the danger is they can feel a little overconfident. Because between the Beijing Olympics, which was a presentation, and the real substance of the capabilities of the country, that's a, there's still a gap to be filled. And that gap may take many years to fill up. I mean, uh, it's, it's across the board to catch up with America, Europe, and Japan in all fields it will take a few decades. Uh, responsible, I think the, so far in this financial crisis, they have acted in a very sober way. <clears throat> they've uh, lent $500 million to one country. Uh, cautious, but not unhelpful. And they have not devalued the UN to, to get a competitive advantage. They are trying to be responsible players in the international community. <clears throat> I think they know that if their peaceful rise is to be credible in this crisis, they must act responsibly. Uh, whether they will act responsibility, responsibly after they become muscular, that we leave to next a few generations to decide. But I hope by then they would realize that this is a multipolar world. China is not going back to Han or Tang times when she was the center of the universe. This is a world where there are many centers of power and strength and innovation. And she will not discover all the new scientific discoveries, all the technological breakthroughs that human beings will make in other societies. Uh, there's America, there's Europe, there's Russia, there's even there's India. This is now a diverse world where everybody is interconnected. And uh, in the course of the next 30, 40 years, the, China, the generation that comes into power in China will understand that, I hope. And if they understand that, that's a safer world for everybody. Thank you. Take a seat. 